I would go with whatever thoughts are in my mind. Um, and yesterday, it's only Tuesday, um, I've been seeing a few clients this week over in my uh, office in Leamington, some counselling clients. Uh, and yesterday I saw a new client uh, for the first time. And whenever I see a new client, I always say to them, when you get to the office, give me a call or give me a text and I'll come down to the door and meet you. Because it's, there's a few different floors in this office. It's not the easiest of places to find. It's right in the centre of Leamington, but you could easily walk past it. And obviously, because it's the first session, I like to greet people at the door. So yesterday, um, I'm waiting for this guy. I'm waiting at the door. Um, the door, obviously, the door's closed. It looks out onto the, one of the main roads in Leamington. And the top of the door's glass, so you can see through it, mainly glass. The bottom's all wood. And I'm standing there waiting for this guy, just looking out the door. It's a few steps up as well, so quite often people walk past. They tend not to look up, so you can sort of people watch, and quite often they won't see you. So um, I like to people watch. So I'm standing there, people watching, just keeping an eye on the time, waiting for this guy. Um, looking out the door and the next thing the doorbell rang and I thought that's a bit strange because I'm right by the door I hadn't, couldn't see anyone at the door so I opened the door and as I opened the door probably two seconds later the guy came rushing up the street for his appointment um, he looked a little bit flustered and I sort of made a joke of it and I said to him how did you do that and he said how did I do what and I said how did you ring the doorbell when you weren't even there yet and he said I didn't um, and it turned out the guy, his, what he wanted to talk about, someone very close to him had passed away. I don't want to go into too many details because it's a small world. But, and he'd kept himself busy. Uh, this person had passed away a few months ago. But he'd kept himself busy, working, just constantly working. And work had gone a bit quiet, so it was starting to hit him. You know, his feelings of loss and grief. Um, and when I said to him about the doorbell ringing, he said, ever since I've lost this person, things like that have been happening to me. Which sort of, you know, um, <laughs> we, we laughed about it, but it sort of got me thinking afterwards uh, about these type of things. And how many experiences, experiences I've had like that in my life that I haven't been able to explain. I'm open to all sorts of things, all religions, you know, I'm a Christian, but I've studied Buddhism, a little bit of Sikhism. Uh, read the Bhagavad Gita, uh, even started to read the Quran at one point. So I'm open to lots of different things. You know, like when I do my martial arts, I study lots of different martial arts. I don't think uh, one sort of system has got all the answers. Um, but it started to, I started to think about past experiences I've had in this area. And I started to think one of the things that came, too many to go into, to be honest. I've always believed that I'm guided. I believe we all are. Uh, how it works, I don't know. Um, but I remember it sort of triggered just before this guy was talking about grief as well and somebody he'd lost. And it triggered for me the time that I lost my dad, probably about 15 years ago. And I remember talking to a friend of mine who was into spiritualist churches um, and asking him if I could go along to his church. And so um, I went to the church, met some really nice people there. I ended up going a few times, actually. Uh, but then decided it wasn't for me. I liked it and I saw some things there that I couldn't, I don't think I'll ever be able to explain. But I decided that I'd rather concentrate on my living um, and, and, and didn't go any and stop going. But one of the times I was there, just between my dad d d passing away and being buried, uh, one of the sessions that I was at, a woman stood up. And she got really upset and she said she could see a young lad, a teenager, stand, uh, standing in front of her, soaking wet. Um, I'm sitting there thinking, well, I can't see anything. But what she was saying is this young lad soaking wet, he's drowned um, and he wants to say sorry to his parents. And, you know, like I said, I'm open to all this. I couldn't see anything, so I didn't really think too much of it. And then a few days later, I'm at my dad's funeral. Uh, and a guy came up, loads of people were coming up to me and telling me how great my dad was, as they do at funerals. Um, and a guy came up to me and he was chatting away to me. Turned out that he came over from Ireland with my dad. They knew each other for years, a long time ago. Um, and he was telling me all about how great my dad was and this and that, having a chat with him. Um, to, be in the, to be honest, I wasn't really in the mood. There was lots of things going around in my head, lots of emotions. But I stood and talked to him. 
He was a nice enough guy. And when he went away, a few uh, five minutes later, I saw my mum and I said to my mum, who is that guy? And she told me his name and she said, oh, he's, he's an alcoholic, which didn't really, you know, make any difference to me. Uh, the guy who seemed sound to me. And she said, oh, you know, he turned to drink probably about 20 years ago when he lost his son. And I said, how did he lose his son? And she said, he fell in a river and drowned. They, they thought he might have been drinking at the time. And I was like, wow, you know, that maybe that message that I'd heard at the spiritualist church was for me um, to say to this guy, <laughs> you know, your son's really sorry about what happened. But I thought, how could I do that? You know, how do I approach a guy that I've never met before and tell him that his son who drowned 20 years ago is really sorry? And I know because I've met him, at a, I, I got this message at a spiritualist church. So it really freaked me out. So, but that got, so that got me thinking about awareness and different levels of awareness and how much how much we miss in everyday life when i'm teaching self defense i always say to people if i could teach people one thing it wouldn't be a right cross it wouldn't be how to put a rear naked strangle on or a, a roundhouse kick it would be be aware of what's going on around you it's absolutely critical to looking after yourself most people haven't got a clue you know, I remember looking at some research where people had interviewed muggers and rapists and they said they couldn't believe how they could follow people around for like half an hour or an hour and not be seen. Most people haven't got a clue about what's going on around them. So awareness for me from a self-defense point of view even is massive. It changes your whole physiology. You go from having a victim mentality to being aware of what's going on around you, looking confident. So from that perspective, awareness is massive. But also, how much do we miss in everyday life? Uh, I met a guy last year, American guy, Reverend Bill MacDonald. He's on Facebook. Look him up. He's an amazing guy. Um, he came to England to do some talks. Uh, and I managed to get a talk on at the Red Corner Gym for him. And just before he gave the talk, you know, we had about 20 minutes to spare. So we went for a walk. And you know, I found him really interesting. Uh, and he said to me, he said, Tony, follow the path of feathers. And, you know, again, being polite, I'm thinking, yeah, that, what does that mean? But what does that mean? But what I do know is that ever since he's told me that, wherever I go, I see feathers. And I've told a couple of friends about it. I told my friend Paul Regan about it. And he texted me and went, for God's sake, Tony, I wish you hadn't have told me about them feathers. I'm seeing fecking feathers everywhere, which made me laugh. But um, I'm guessing the feathers were already there. I'm still not sure what Bill meant by it, but I'm guessing the feathers were already there. It's just that in everyday life, I was walking past and completely missing them. And like I said, it got me thinking about how much do we, how many other things do we miss? Uh, when I was in Peru, or when I met my daughter in Peru earlier this year, and did some of the Inca trails and Machu Picchu, and it was an amazing experience. But while we were there, we had a guide for a few days, and we'd be walking through bits of jungle. And this guide would suddenly stop and point out an orchid to us. Turns out he had a fascination with orchids. Um, I'm not really into orchids, but what I did find really interesting was how this guy could just spot them. We'd walk past and he'd spot an orchid and he'd start explaining to us what, it was, what type of orchid it was and when it flowered. And there were so many different orchids dotted about that, we again, we would have just walked past. So... I guess the message that I'm trying to uh, get across today is maybe, maybe it'd be a good thing sometimes to slow down, have a look around us, and maybe see what we're missing. Maybe follow the path of feathers yourself um, and start looking out for these things, you know, because there's so many beautiful things in life. Um, and because the pace of life is so fast, we miss most of them. So stop, s slow down, have a look, take your foot off the accelerator. Have a look around you and, and start seeing what you see on different levels as well. There's so many different levels of awareness. Uh, and that's the message for today, guys. I've had some great feedback from these messages as well. Quite a few of them are personal. I've had phone calls. I've had people emailing me, telling me how much they're getting out of these messages, which is really nice. It's nice when uh, I don't expect it, but it's nice when people do give you feedback and say how much they've enjoyed it. So... Thanks to everyone who's, who's following these uh, and thanks for all the nice comments. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.